What's up, folks? Dave Swift here, clientamp.com. Today, we're going to talk about something elusive and magical. It'll give your WordPress website the ability to load faster, giving your customers a better user experience and improving your rankings on Google. It will also allow your website to run more efficiently, thus keeping your server costs down and your wallet happy. This magic technology is what you're always told to clear. It is the cache. It's true, clearing the cache will make the content you've just changed appear on the front end, but it's actually doing a whole lot more. Now, if you're new to caching or you've just heard of it before, but you don't really know what all of this malarkey is, this video should give you everything you need to be somewhat of an authority on the subject without getting overburdened by all of the technical details. The first thing we need to know is what actually happens on a WordPress website that doesn't have any caching. So a user comes to your page and they make a request of the page. They say, hey, load page, I want to read what's on you. The next thing that happens is WordPress, the application itself running on your server. It's just it's just software, right? Like Microsoft Word running on your computer. It's software. It gets this message and it says, oh, hey, someone wants to see something. So it goes into a database of information and looks for the information that the user has just requested. The database finds what they want, and then it spits it back out. Then WordPress takes that information and renders it into HTML and CSS and everything that's necessary to display the actual web page that was requested. Then finally sends it over to the user where the user's browser gets all of that code and makes it beautiful or ugly or whatever your site looks like. Now, this is all a lot of work. And if your website had to go through this process every single time someone came to your website, well, you'd need a very powerful computer in order to serve any number of guests at all. So we have caching, caching to the rescue. Caching is essentially a snapshot or picture. Basically, you can think of it as the website has already been rendered, the CSS, the HTML, that's all ready to go. So if someone comes to your website and says, hey, I wanna see this page, well, the website's already got it ready to go. A good metaphor might be like, walking into a restaurant that's already got all of the meals prepared. You simply order something, the person working at the counter reaches back, grabs it and hands it to you. There's no customization of the order. They don't have to go in back and talk to the chef and you know talk about whether they have the right ingredients to make your custom item. No, they just grab the item and you are good to go off and running. That is a cached website. So essentially the flow here would be someone comes to WordPress, makes a request and then WordPress goes, well, do we have a cached version of this? And if we do, okay, here it is. We don't have to do any work beyond that. But if it is not, well, then it will actually go and make a cached version for the next visitor, assuming someone's going to want to view that same page and then end up doing all of the other things we already talked about, rendering the page and displaying it to the user. So that's what page caching does. And in fact, there are a lot of different ways to cache a page on a WordPress website. On Cloudways, there are actually three different ways to do page caching. Two of them are a little bit more common, and one is fairly new to the Cloudways platform. We're going to touch on all three of them in this video, but I want to start off with the OG version, which is Varnish server caching. So Varnish is great because the caching is actually happening at the server level. WordPress as an application doesn't have to get involved at all. As the request comes into the web server, we don't have to talk to WordPress. We've already got the results ready to go. So it takes even more load off of the server. Server side page caching is always going to be the most efficient way to serve a web page from a single server. If you have a server on Cloudways, Varnish is enabled by default. There are some instances where you might want to turn it off. So let me show you where the Varnish settings are located in their GUI. So first of all, I'm inside of my server here. And if I go under manage services and then scroll down to the bottom right, I can see that I have varnish currently running. I could disable it by clicking right here, or I could also clear the contents of the cache, meaning that any data that is stored inside of the cache will be removed. This could slow down your website a little bit because the next time someone comes to the page, it's going to have to do all of the work inside of WordPress to re-render that page. It's going to get all of the data from the database and then show it to your user. Now you might be wondering, well, why even have this button here if it's going to slow down your website? Well, typically people will purge the cache from their website when things are not rendering on the front end like they expect because maybe they made a change to their website and then it wasn't visible to users. So that's when you'd want to make sure you clear the cache so that it can draw again from the freshest data. 
Now, when you set up a WordPress website on Cloudways, it's actually going to install a plugin page cache as well. That's called Breeze. Breeze is a plugin that Cloudways makes themselves. And here it is, it's inside of the plugins listing. Maybe you've been using Cloudways for a while and you've seen this plugin, you don't really know what it is. Let's open up the settings here and take a look under the hood. Now there's quite a few items to go through inside of the Breeze plugin. So I'm just gonna hit on the ones that are most relevant to what we're talking about right now, which is page caching and particularly page caching at the server level. Now Breeze is a plugin and it runs at the application level and the application here is WordPress. So Breeze is gonna work both with Varnish, which you see down here. I can click on Varnish and I can see that it will actually auto purge Varnish if a change has been made on the WordPress website. This is great because then we don't have to go into the Cloudways GUI, go over to our server. Here it is. I can go under my settings and packages. Actually, it's not there. It's under manage services. So you can see it's kind of tedious to get into the setting I was at before. But if you're running Breeze, well, that's gonna automatically clear Varnish anytime it needs to be cleared in order to get your website to load properly. If you find that it doesn't happen automatically, you can purge it manually right from inside of WordPress. Another really nice touch. So I mentioned before that Varnish is at the server level and it's gonna be caching everything at the server level and never even talking to WordPress, which is ideal for optimization. But there are some reasons we'll talk about later on where that is not ideal in order to serve your customers in the best way possible. So we have Breeze as a second level of page caching. Essentially what's gonna happen here is if Varnish no longer has the cache, well, you can have Breeze set up to have a caching system as well. And then that way, at least WordPress will be hit, but not as deeply. You won't have to go into the database, render everything and have WordPress do nearly as much work. WordPress can simply relay its cache version over to Varnish. So we're only really one extra level deep at this point. So as you can see here in basic options for Breeze, it says this is the basic cache that we recommend should be kept enabled in all cases. Basic cache will build the internal static caches for the WordPress websites. So page caching is highly efficient, but the bad news is it doesn't work in all scenarios. Like for example, what if you run an e-commerce store and you're running WooCommerce as your platform? Well, WooCommerce can't cache everything about the user on the page because then everyone who visited your website is going to be served a copy of some other user's account. They'll have access to their purchases. It'll just be a bad security issue all around. So in this scenario, we're dealing with what is often referred to as dynamic content meaning that the content is going to change, at least a portion of it on the page will be changing in a way that it doesn't make sense to just show a flat HTML file. We need to populate it with relevant information to the existing user visiting the site. For this, it doesn't mean that all caching is unusable. Instead, often what will be used for e-commerce sites is object caching. Object caching for the regular person is really just like caching the results of a database. If you remember our original chart where WordPress receives a request and then it goes to the database, well, the database actually doing the work of finding the information, that can take a long time. So what if instead of that, we made a copy of very common requests that we could just fire off at a moment's notice? Well, that is object caching. And of course, Cloudways has multiple layers of server-side database caching. The first one we'll talk about is called Memcache, and you can see it here under Manage Services. Memcache is a bit limited at what it can do, but what it does help with is quite powerful. The first thing you should know about Memcache is that it can only store very simple key value pairs, meaning that you can have complex long strings of information inside of Memcache. It's also memory only. There is no hard storage. You can't save anything to disk with Memcache. It is highly efficient when it comes to utilization of memory though. So it is something I recommend having turned on. Its performance impact over at Cloudways is going to simply be to reduce those repetitive database queries that we've been talking about. Memcache is going to be enabled whenever you start a new server. So there's nothing you really need to do, but just know that it is on. You can find it under managed services and you could restart it if you have any issues, you're trying to troubleshoot something. The other type of database caching or object caching as it's more commonly referred to is Redis. 
Redis can be a great way to optimize your website, particularly if you have a lot of dynamic information because Redis is allowed to store things to disk. So now we can have database queries stored to disk and ready to go at a moment's notice. This is wonderful for serving large numbers of WooCommerce clients or people who are trying to take your online courses. Now, Redis has two components. It runs at the server level, and you can see it here once again in my managed services. There's nothing you need to do. It's on by default, but there is a plugin component to it as well, because if it's just installed on a server, it won't actually work with WordPress without an additional plugin to kind of tie everything together. The plugin that's used to connect Redis up to WordPress is called Object Cache, and it's available for free in the WordPress repository. However, if you're a Cloudways user, you get Object Cache Pro absolutely for free. And believe me, this is a huge benefit. It probably costs more than your hosting bill if you're a smaller site. Object Cache Pro starts at $95 a month per site. That's 950 bucks a year. Now, the biggest reason you're gonna to want to run something like Object Cache Pro versus the free version is if you're using WooCommerce. There is a built-in integration for WooCommerce inside of Object Cache Pro. No other Redis plugin has this. The free version is right here and you can see it is not included. What this means is your WooCommerce database queries, which can be extremely taxing on your server, can be severely mitigated by using Object Cache Pro but you won't see those benefits if you don't have this plugin. Meaning that Redis will be working in the background and caching database requests, but it just doesn't know enough about WooCommerce to bother caching those requests and it'll just leave them alone so that things don't get screwed up. Because like I mentioned before, you definitely don't want your e-commerce data to be cached unnecessarily. When you install WordPress on a Cloudways server and you have at least two gigs of memory available on that server, they will give you Object Cache Pro pre-installed, activated, configured, everything ready to go at no additional cost. Two gig server is definitely not $95 a month, so this is an absolute bargain. Okay, so now we've covered four different ways to cache your website, but we're not done yet. Let's summarize what we've talked about so far. We've got Varnish to do full page caching, meaning that it's never hitting WordPress. It doesn't touch your database. This is highly efficient, but doesn't work for e-commerce. Then we have page caching, which runs as a plugin inside of WordPress. Now this is still efficient, but it has to go into the WordPress application. So it's not quite as efficient as doing it at the server level. And this will be true regardless of what plugin you're using, by the way. The next thing we talked about works in tandem with your page caching, and that is database caching. So we had both memcached for smaller requests that can be stored just in memory. And then we also have Redis for bigger requests, it can be longer strings, can really improve the speed of your LMS or your e-commerce website. But there is one more type of page caching. Remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned there is three, and this one is kind of the granddaddy of all of them. If you turn this on, you can turn the other server-side caching off, by the way. This is called edge caching, and Cloudways has an integration with Cloudflare to do full page edge caching. And what this means and why this is so powerful is that not only will your entire page be cached, but it'll be cached outside of your server. So it'll actually be stored on servers all over the globe, the entire page, not just the CSS, not just the JavaScript, which you might be thinking of when you think of something like a CDN. No, this is gonna store the entire page itself. Of course, if information needs to be delivered dynamically, well, then it will eventually make its way to the server. But edge caching is by far the fastest and most efficient way to do full page caching. And it doesn't even take any resources from your server. To get started with edge caching on Cloudways, you're gonna to wanna to go over to your application. So click on your applications right here find the website you want to work on, and then click on the Cloudflare option right here. You will see the option for Cloudflare Enterprise. This is the only thing that's not included for free that I've mentioned in this entire video. Cloudflare Enterprise is going to be an additional cost per month. How much will depend on the number of websites you're using it on. So starting off at a single website, it's just gonna be five bucks a month. That's extremely reasonable given everything that is included. You get a CDN, you get image optimization, you get DDoS protection, so that's gonna prevent the bad guys from sending bots to take your website down. 
You also get a web access firewall and it's going to optimize your website for mobile. The last item down here is our focus for today though. It is edge page caching. To get started with Cloudflare Enterprise, just go ahead and enter in your domain right here and then hit enable. You'll get some DNS records and some instructions to get set up and running. At that point, once you have Cloudflare Enterprise enabled, I recommend heading over to your server level. So for me, that's gonna be Dave's Money Sites. I'm gonna click on this. I'll go under my server, just clicking anywhere on the name. Then I'll go to my Manage Services, and then I'll turn off the Varnish caching only. I'll just hit Disable here. It's gonna start disabling Varnish, and then my website will be fully cached on the edge using Cloudflare's Enterprise Network. To be crystal clear here, we're gonna disable Varnish and take advantage of Cloudflare's edge caching, but we'll leave Redis intact. Redis will still be helpful for those e-commerce requests where dynamic data is necessary. So full page caching done on the edge, and then Redis will be there for any requests to the database that can be utilized via Object Cache Pro. So far, I've been focused on the technical side of things, how to set stuff up, how it works together, and that is important. But I think what's more important is the practical side of things. What can caching really do for you? Now, we're gonna do some load testing here, and I'm gonna demonstrate it because talk is cheap. Typically, YouTubers might be focused on something like page speed insights here to say, hey, my website loads faster with caching than it does without it. And you know, that is true, that will be the case. You'll get a faster loading website. That is good, but to me, it's not the most important thing. What's most important is if I'm trying to sell something online and I've got a large influx of customers coming to my site at the same time, perhaps for a product launch, that my website holds up. And nothing can help your website hold up more to large bursts of traffic than a properly configured caching system. So let's go ahead and do some load testing here. Now, a bit of a disclosure, it's very hard to simulate actual human behavior on a website, but I'm gonna be using this tool right here called loader.io to do some simulation. It's not gonna be exact, but we should see a difference between a cache site and an on-cache site. All right, let's begin. I wanna set the stage first. I've got a Cloudways server here installed with four gigs of RAM, and I'm also using their faster cores version, which basically means it's got a faster CPU. Now, currently on this site, I have Varnish for our page caching disabled. I also have Redis turned off completely. Here's the Object Cache Pro plugin on the website. You can see it says Redis is disabled. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just disable this plugin entirely. Here's the Object Cache Pro plugin. It is now de deactivated. And I'm also going to deactivate Breeze. This is what the website looks like, completely stock WordPress 2024 theme. So over on Loader, I'm going to create a new test. I'm just using the free plan, by the way. I have no relation to this company at all. I'm gonna hit new host here. I've entered in the domain of my WooCommerce website over on Cloudways, and I've specified the correct port. Now I'm gonna verify this host. Loader gives you a file that you need to upload to your server, and that verifies you actually own the server. This is an important step because you can't go and just do load testing on servers you don't own because that's called a DDoS attack, and it's not very nice. So I'm gonna verify this server here. I have completed the steps. It says verifying, and it is successful here. So now we'll proceed to the next step of creating a test. And now to configure the test, what I'm gonna do here is set up a test that runs for one minute, and we're gonna go from having just one visitor all the way up to 500 visitors. Then we can gauge how the server responds as the load increases. So I'll just change the number of clients to be from one up to 500. It's gonna go for one minute, and let's go ahead and run the test. All right, so the test is currently in progress, and what you're seeing is the average response time. We're looking at response time right now. Currently, the average response time is climbing and climbing. You can see the low end when it first began was just 234 milliseconds, and as the test goes on, the response time is climbing to well over 10,000 milliseconds. So this means that when someone makes a request, it's slowing down and slowing down until eventually it just gets so slow that it's unusable. All right, so the test has completed and it did in fact end in an error. You can see here it says, the test was aborted because it reached the error threshold. Well, how fast did it reach that threshold? And at what point did the site really become kind of unusable? Now, our general frame of reference is that we want our site to respond in 
under 500 milliseconds, which is half of a second. Once we get above that, it's gonna start to feel a little bit slow, but usable. You cross two to three seconds and the site really feels painful to use. So how fast did we reach that threshold? Well, you can see here is 250 milliseconds and we got there right about five seconds into the test, which is definitely not great. At five seconds into the test, we had reached just 50 clients. And remember, this is two and a half seconds. This is five times worse than what I actually wanted to see. When we're at only 580 milliseconds, well, it turns out we really just have 15 active users at that time, which means that with our eight gigabyte server and faster CPU cores, only about 15 people at a time can be making a purchase on your website and receive a really good experience. Of course, that isn't a hard and fast law. This is just one test and an example, but we do see a significant drop off as traffic increases here. Five seconds response time right around 10 to 11 seconds into the test, which corresponds with 100 visitors. And by the time we hit a full 10 second response time, we're at 23 seconds into the test and we only have 200 or so visitors to our site. So now let's make some changes. I'm going to turn on Redis. I will enable Varnish. In the plugins, I'm gonna turn on Breeze and Object Cache Pro. Make sure to enable this. And now I've loaded up the page in a private window and I'm looking inside of my developer tools in the networking section. And under the headers here, I can see in fact, that the caching is on right here. It says X cache hit confirming that the page is being cached successfully. All right, great. Now is time to rerun that same test. No changes have been made other than I've turned on varnish and I've turned on object cache pro as well as the breeze plugin. Before I rerun the test, let's just refresh ourselves on the numbers. Remember we started to see errors right around 22 seconds into the test. That's when the network timeout started to occur because the server just literally couldn't keep up with the number of guests that we had. So as long as we make it past 22 seconds, things will be looking improved with this caching configuration. All right, let's rerun the test. So it's preparing the test. And here we go off to the races. Now you can see the response times are already a lot slower. We're at 30 milliseconds here. Whereas before I think we were up to like 580 milliseconds almost instantly. My goal is to keep that response time under half a second. That way everyone's having a good experience visiting the page. All right, this test has concluded and the results are completely the opposite of the on cache website. So overall, the average response time is 132 milliseconds. You can see here at around 10 seconds, our response time was 43 milliseconds. The lines are also so much tighter together here. Remember this dark line actually represents the response time. And then this green line underneath is how many clients are using the site at once. So up here near the end of the test, you know, we're getting close to 500 visitors. Well, the response time is right around 250 milliseconds. Remember just a handful of visitors crippled the uncached website. And here we're able to complete the test with 500 visitors and our average time of response is only 242 milliseconds. Caching works. It is critical to an e-commerce website's success. All right, so remember, this is just one test. It's not any sort of definitive result. However, the results are so staggering in one direction, I think you'd be very hard pressed to argue that caching does not play a significant role in the success of the ability to manage multiple concurrent users on your website. And because Cloudways includes Object Cache Pro, you know that your e-commerce caching is going to be far superior than just having a standard full page cache on your website. So I hope you now understand website caching a little bit more than you did when you first started watching this video. Honestly, you don't need to know a heck of a lot more. Thanks to the folks over at Cloudways, they make getting set up with a very detailed and intricate caching system dead simple. Remember, anytime you start up a website, it's already going to have page caching enabled. It's going to have Redis and Object Cache Pro as long as your server has more than two gigs of memory and you'll be in really good shape. Take things over the edge by simply disabling varnish and turning on Cloudflare edge caching and you're going to be money. Now, of course, if you're a DIY person, you could do all of the stuff that Cloudways does for you yourself. It's just going to cost you a lot more. You have to pay for those plugins and it's going to cost your time as well to get everything configured 
just right. So if this is interesting to you, I highly recommend getting signed up for Cloudways Hosting. I've got a link in the description and a QR code somewhere over here. So go ahead and check those things out. Thank you so much for watching the video. Hit me up with any questions in the comment section, and I'll see you in the next one.